Right. Good morning. I'm Scott. I'm the, I'm the pastor here. And so if you're new today, make sure I get a chance to say hi to you in the lobby. I'd love to connect with you um, after the service. And to those of you online, we are glad that you're worshiping with us online as an option. We haven't figured out how to do communion yet, but we're working on that for communion online. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, so today, we, uh, before we get started, a, a couple of things. Um, we're, we're doing this series called Do Something because we want to do something. And actually, it's, it's pushing us towards an event on February 2nd. On February 2nd, the Super Bowl Sunday, and the Patriots won't be in it. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get emails on that. <laughs> but uh, on that, that morning, what we're going to do is we're going to gather about 8.30, and we're going to go out. We have multiple projects around the community uh, from Hope Place and uh, Halifax Urban Ministry, Beacon Center, uh, Tomoka State Park, Osceola Elementary, lots of projects that we're going to do. We're going to go out and actually serve because when we worship, we serve. And when we serve, we worship. Worship isn't just something where we sit. It's participatory. It's, it's a go out and do. And so we're going to go out and do something in our community uh, uh, that day. So folks will be looking around going, hey, what's this church doing? Uh, and we'll say, hey, we're worshiping as we serve in lots of ways. And so the goal, though, is we're going to do that and then we're going to come back here and have a service around around 11.30, 11.45, and then lunch together. Um, and so we're going to tell you more about it, but just kind of put that, uh, mark that off. Next week, there'll be some sign-ups uh, in the lobby and online where you can do that to start signing up for projects. Uh, but it's about going out and doing something. And really, part of the goal is we have a goal at our church to uh, increase our attendance by 5% this year. And I think this will help with it because there are people who like, I don't want to go to church. I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to go to church. But they, they want to do something in the world. They want to make a difference in the world. They want to know that what we do in here makes a difference out there. And so if you got some friends who are like, I ain't going to church, say, well, we're not going to church. We're going to serve our community. Um, invite them to come with you. And maybe they'll discover, you know what, we're not that bad. Uh, and want to come back. So join us for that. We're doing this series, though, Do Something, where we're looking at the three questions that humanity wrestles with throughout their whole lives. Who am I? What am I supposed to do? And what difference uh, do I want to make in the world? Who am I? What am I supposed to do? What difference do I make in the world? Last week we talked about who am I? And we said that you are, you are the apple of God's eye, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are shaped together in your mama's womb, and that you are gifted and talented and ability, that God loves you and God's given you all kind of gifts. And so we talked about that. Did you do your homework? Let you know, the New Start kids on Thursday night, every one of them did their homework, all the adults. <laughs> Your homework, and if you didn't see the sermon, check it out online. Your homework was to list out, this is what I'm good at. These are my gifts. These are my abilities. These are my talents. And then to talk to a friend, somebody you know, somebody you trust, somebody can say, hey, this is what I see within you. These are your gifts. And if you wanted to, there are lots of assessments online, spiritual gifts tests, the Enneagram, all that kind of stuff. These are my gifts. This is what I'm good at. So did you uh, turn to somebody right now and say, my gift is, go ahead, tell them your gift. Don't be shy. So as, as we said last week, everybody's gifted and everybody's gifts are different. That we, all, that, that we use our gifts in different ways. But today I want to talk about what, what am I supposed to do? Uh, what is my purpose in life? Actually in the church, our church wording we would do, church world calls it this way. We say, what is my calling? What are you called uh, to do? The problem with when we say what is my calling is anytime we start to talk about a calling, anytime the church says, let's talk about how you're called, everybody goes, oh, that's the preacher. The preachers are called. Preachers are called. And yes, that, that's true. Preachers are called. Preachers are set apart uh, to, to do what we do as, as preachers. And you know, our church has a goal. We want to send out, uh, we want to have 10 pastors in 10 years. Uh, we got two already in the system. We got one kind of working their way in, so we're at three. And, and maybe you're wrestling with a call uh, into ministry, uh, into ordained ministry. And if you are, I'd love to walk alongside of you in that journey. And just, you know, the hardest thing to do, the first, the hardest thing to do is admit, I think God may be calling me. Once you take that step, we can help you go uh, from there. But I need to tell you this. Everybody is called. Everyone, God has a calling on all of us. Here's what First Peter says. It's a book, uh, Peter, uh, he, he actually, we actually believe First Peter was a sermon, probably preached in Rome after a baptism, a baptismal service. And Peter preached this. And here's what he says in chapter 2. He says, but you are a chosen priesthood, a royal, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into a wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. 
Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I mean, Peter is preaching to a group of people. They've been baptized and they've been washed clean. They've been set apart. And then Peter says, look, you are called. You are set apart. You are chosen. When you are baptized, when you are made new, when you're made right with Christ, that God has a plan and God has a purpose and God is calling you to do something. So just acknowledge that right now. You are gifted and you are called. So turn to somebody and say, you are gifted and you are called. So say yes, all right? You are called in some way and capacity. And, and the problem is, the problem is we teach, when we talk about calling, we make it all about the what. And that, what are you to do? What is that? The calling is not what you are. A calling is who you are. You see, when you, make, when you make your calling all about your job or your career or this is what you're supposed to do, it becomes a box you check. Okay, I'm doing it. Okay, check, check, check. That's not it. A calling is not what you do. It, it, it's, it's, it's who you are. We, 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 I know I know. you're like, ah, I don't get that because we talk about it in the what as though there's something we have to do and we never deal with the other questions, how and why. And I think you have to deal with those questions first to understand the what. And the big question is, why are you called? And why has God done this? Why has God set you apart? In Ephesians, Paul writes it this way. He says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Now, everybody loves that line right there. We're like, yes. We have been saved. We've been singing about grace. We've been saved by grace. God loves me, period. Ching, ching, good to go. Right? That it's not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not only work, not by work, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to, to what? To do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. We love the line, and we as Protestant churches, we preach this a lot. You are saved by grace through faith. Not that you can boast, God's done it. We're like, yes. God, I can't work my way into heaven. I can't get my salvation by, earning, by working at it. That's what we preach. That's what we teach. We love that. But do you see why you're saved? See, I mean, be real clear. Paul does not say, you are saved by grace through faith so you can escape the fire of hell. He doesn't say, you are saved by grace through faith so you can leave this miserable planet and go up into heaven. He doesn't say, you are saved by grace through faith so everything will be wonderful. Paul says, you are saved by grace through faith, set apart by Christ Jesus to what? That's the why. Why are you living out your calling? Because you have been saved by grace through faith. God is calling you to be you in the world around you because that's why God saved you. That's been the plan all along. When God created the earth, when God created humanity and put us in the Garden of Eden, God said, look, I want you to care for creation. I want you to be good stewards. God, for whatever reason, I can't, I don't know this, but God seems to enjoy hanging out with humanity and working in us and through us. There are moments where God could certainly do it a lot better than we could, but God goes, that wasn't bad, I kind of like that, and goes along right with us in that. And that was the plan from the beginning. And when humanity screwed it up, when we ate the apple or the fruit or the persimmon or whatever and it fell apart, God's plan wasn't, I'm going to do God's plan was, all right. And he shows up and talks to a guy named Abram and says, come on. I'm going to bless you. Well, that sounds familiar to what that guy Peter says later on. I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. I'm going to work in you and through you and among you so you can go out there and tell the world about that. That's how we're going to operate. That's what we're called to do. Our calling is never about us. Our calling is about the kingdom of God. Our calling is about living out our lives in such a way that we show God, we proclaim God, we give God to the world around us. I was talking to the kids on, on Sunday, uh, Thursday night, asked a question that wasn't in the sermon, but it made it into today. So if you come on Thursday night, sometimes it makes it into Sunday morning. We're, we're talking about that we're called to bear the image of God. And it reminded me there's this great scripture passage in uh, the Gospels where they take a, 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 a coin. And they, they tell Jesus, should we, pay, should we pay taxes to Caesar? They ask Jesus that question. Should we pay taxes? Don't you wish he would have said no? I mean, don't you wish you had the biblical document where Jesus says, no, you should not pay taxes. Awesome. And Jesus goes, no, uh, 
show me a coin. And the guy reaches in his pocket and pulls out a coin. And he goes, whose image is on that coin? The guy says, it's Caesar. And then Jesus utters this great line. Then give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. Right? And we're like, oh, yeah, it's wonderful, scriptural. Man. When we were created in the beginning, we were created in the image of God. We bear God's image in the world. So give to Caesar or give to the IRS that dollar bill or the multiple dollar bills you're going to give. But God gets you in living out your calling. You are to bear God's image in the world around you. And what, what that means is you're, you, you are to literally mimic God in the world around you, to show God's love and God's grace in the world around you. That means you're calling. You can be called in all kinds of ways. You can be called to be a doctor or a teacher or a judge. or you, you can work out a calling, but no matter what it is you're doing, God's love and grace should bear through you in that calling, in what you do. So if you're teaching the love of God, God's grace should flow through you. If you're a doctor, it should flow through you. If you're on the back of the garbage truck, it should flow through you. If you're driving down Granada, or you're standing in line at Publix, which is nuts so now because the trails Publix has closed, you should bear the image. When you're on the golf course, you should live out your calling. When you're at the bar, you should live out your calling. When you're with your friends, you're called. You don't, you don't get to, as followers of Jesus Christ, because you have been saved by grace through faith, you don't get to go, now I'm living in my calling, but now I'm not. Right? You don't ever get that moment. You are always living into the calling, for you have been saved by grace through faith to do good works. And you're like, well, how? Paul says it this way, Ephesians, sticking with that book. As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you, live a life, what does it say? Worthy of the calling you have received. Uh, what I love about this is live a life worthy of the calling. Uh, how has God treated you? Oh, good, good answer. <laughs> One person in the room was paying attention. Excellent. I'm sure some of you online were commenting, and we just can't hear you yet, but. I mean, God loves you, right? E even in those moments when you're not lovable, God forgives you, even though you've done nothing to deserve that forgiveness. God doesn't condemn you, judge you, demean you, devalue you. God never puts you down. God's not up there going, I hope she screws up, right? God's always encouraging you. God sees you at your very best. That, that's what we love about God's love and God's grace is, is, is God is always picking us up and helping us. God is always sustaining us. God is always loving us. God is always forgiving us. So you go do the same. In other words, your calling is this. Whatever you do, do it in such a way that people see Jesus in you. And you live that out. And I know some of you are like, yeah, but I, I want a specific calling. Uh, God can use you in any way. One of my most favorite moments I've told you before is from a young girl named Jenny Frack. Jenny Frack was a Florida State student, so brilliant. She was thinking about whether she will, should work at camp as a summer camp counselor or should she do her internship as a pediatric nurse. And she couldn't make, she was, I was interviewing her, and, and I remember she, I just, I just, I just wish I knew what God wanted me to do. I just wish I knew God's will for my life. I just want to make sure, I'm, and I looked at it, and I got, I got tired of the whining, to be honest with you. I'm like, just make it, you know, and I'm like, I, I know exactly what God wants you to do. I know it. I can, I can prove it to you. She goes, oh, well, yeah, and I reached in my pocket, and I had a dime. I wish that I had a quarter, but I had a dime. And I said, heads as you come back to camp, tails as you go be a pediatric nurse intern. And I flipped it, and it was like a ninja, man. Grabbed it out of midair, put it on my wrist, and I went, do you want me to tell you? She goes, no, I should go to camp. And I went, yeah. See, sometimes we get so wrapped up, what does God want me to do? Just do something, because most of the stuff you're wrestling with, most of you aren't trying to decide, should I be a mass murderer or go into the priesthood? <laughs> you're not dealing with that kind of stuff. 
Your calling is your calling where God has shaped you and placed you and put you into this world. Paul says, live out your calling. It doesn't say live out the calling or there's something. Live out who you are. You are shaped. You are formed. You are gifted to be the way you are. So be you and let God shine through. That is your calling in all kind of ways. Now, there are separate and specific moments where you need to step up to the plate and teach a small group or serve on a committee or do those kind of things because you are gifted in that way. But rather just start with. To start with sharing God's love by you being you. And as soon as I say that, some of you right now I can see your body language. There's that line in the scripture where it says Jesus knew what they were thinking. That always freaks me out until I realize I start preaching. I can watch some of y'all. Some of y'all right now are like, mm-hmm. I know what you're thinking. Let's finish this up so we can get out of here. But a lot of y'all are thinking, but. And you start coming up with the excuses. Here's why I can't. I'm not... And most of it, most of the excuses aren't because you aren't talented enough. Most of you in this room realize how talented and gifted you are and that you have the ability to do stuff. Your excuses aren't, I'm not qualified. It's I'm not good enough because people know me. They know what I was like when I was in high school or yesterday. I've fallen short. I'm... I'm I'm not, you're qualified, you're gifted, but you will start coming up with the reasons why I can't live out my calling because. One of the things I've learned since I moved to Ormond Beach is about sea glass. Uh, If you're familiar with sea glass, it's, it's, um, it's found on the beaches, so that's where you find it. Um. And it's usually discarded glass. Sometimes it's plastic, you don't know, and sometimes it's stones. Uh, actually, somebody was telling me that a lot of sea glass is from the old Spanish ships uh, that sunk uh, out there. But, but it's broken, and, and it literally it's just pieces of trash. But over the years, the wind, and the, I mean, not the wind, the waves and the surf and the ocean have smoothed them out, shined them up, cleaned them up, made them into some funky shapes, beautiful there are a lot of us in this room that sometimes feel discarded broken really in baptism we understand that we are made new that we are clean that we are saved by grace faith and how many of you can tell stories that over the years God has shaped you and worked on you and smoothed out those rough edges filled in those cracks cleaned up that dirt and shaped you for such a moment as this that is the good news of great joy What I'd love for you to do when you come forward for communion today is receive communion. Then on the way back, balcony yours isn't up there, but on the way back on the side aisles, there there are bowls of water with sea glass in them. I'd love for you to take a piece of sea glass today. Just reach into the water to remind you that you have been washed clean. You have been made new. You are saved by grace through faith. And then pull out a piece of sea glass and put it somewhere that you're going to see it. Uh, so if it's on your nightstand or your mirror, by your mirror or on your car or wherever. So that every time you look at this piece of sea glass, it was broken and it was discarded. But like God's grace that has been working on you, the rough edges have been smoothed out. The dirtiness has been washed away. And it's just the right fit. When you see it, pray for God to show you ways to live out your call and to give you an opportunity to reflect God at work and at play and at home. That when you see this, may it remind you that you have been saved by grace through faith. That you are a chosen people. That you are a royal priesthood. That God has gifted you and you are wonderful. 
and that God expects you to be part of a plan to bring heaven to earth because you're going to reflect God in this world and love people the way he loves you. One of the things I love about communion is all are welcome in the United Methodist Church. It's a great statement that we're a little bit of sea glass coming up. Every week, we may get roughed up a little bit and have some sharp edges to us. But when we come forward to communion, it's another time and another place that where God begins to shape us and form us. But as you receive communion today, may you know you are gifted. May you know you are called. On the way out, grab that sea glass to remind you to mimic God in all that you do. So at work tomorrow, or at play today, driving on Granada, or at the public line, or dealing with that coworker, or your children, that they will be to say about you, I saw God in them. They treated me the way Jesus does. That is how you live out your calling. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks unto God. And after giving thanks, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took a cup and he gave thanks unto God. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you should drink of it in remembrance of me. And so today we come in remembrance that God has called us, that God has gifted us. And that can be shared in a variety of ways. And some of you do need to think about what ways are you going to step up and use the gifts that God has given you. And all of us can mimic God in the world around us by loving the way God loved us. For you have been saved by grace through faith. Not that you can boast, for this is God's workmanship. But you have been set apart by Christ Jesus to do good works that have been prepared in advance for you to do. Let's pray. God, we just ask that you pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of the bread and the cup. And make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. That as we feast on them, we might experience your love and your grace. And may we be reminded that we have been set apart to do good works, that we have been saved by grace through faith, that all of us are like sea glass. That over time, God, your love and your grace has shaped us and formed us. You have worn down some of our anger. You've cleaned up some of our sharp tongue edges. You've healed some of the cracks within us. So may we go out there and do the same. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.